crumbled buildings, destructive tsunamis and devastated communities. The impact of earthquakes can be enormous, so much so that they can reshape the Earth's surface with their force. This giant rock has just fallen on the RSA building. For most of us, earthquakes are most closely associated with places such as Japan, New Zealand or California. But the ground beneath Australia's feet is not as geologically stable as many think. Is it an earthquake or a structural thing? Let's go. On average, Australia has 700 reported earthquakes a year. Already in 2022, hundreds of people were rattled by a 4.7 magnitude earthquake in WA's Great Southern. It occurred near Wagen and was the biggest of a swarm of 40 earthquakes in that region in the space of three weeks, something that happens quite frequently in the area. So why does Australia, which is not on a plate line, get earthquakes and why are some regions more prone to them? The Australian tectonic plate boundary runs around the Indonesian archipelago through the southwest Pacific and New Zealand and ends midway between New Zealand and Antarctica. And like all plates, it's constantly moving, colliding into the Pacific plate to Australia's north and east and the Eurasian plate to the northwest. The collision between moving plates generates stress deep inside the Earth's crust, and you'll see most of the big earthquakes on the plate boundaries. But that pressure also creates what's known as intraplate fault lines. You can think of it like a pavlova. If you put pressure on its edges, that's where the biggest cracks will be. But you'll also see cracks starting to form on the inside of the pav too. Earthquakes occur all around Australia but some regions are more prone to it than others. WA gets some of the biggest and the most, like Meckering in WA's wheat belt, which was destroyed by a 6.5 magnitude earthquake in 1968. This is partly because of the sheer land mass in comparison to other states. But Geoscience Australia seismologist Hugh Glanville says it also has a few other factors working against it. One reason is some of the rock is older and more brittle, so it's easier to crack. Another is the direction of some of the fault lines in WA, compared to the direction the pressure is coming from, which happens to make it easier for the fault lines to move. And WA also gets something known as earthquake swarms, far more frequently than any other state. Just been hit by an earthquake again. While a usual earthquake pattern involves a main shock and a series of aftershocks, an earthquake swarm involves tens or even hundreds of moderate main shocks, each with their own aftershock. Other active areas include the Adelaide Hills, the Great Dividing Range between Melbourne, Canberra and Newcastle, and Tennant Creek in the Territory, where Australia's largest onshore earthquake was recorded. The good news is most of Australia's earthquakes are magnitude two and three earthquakes, which will cause light shaking, but no damage. It's not until magnitude four and a half that you start to see minor damage, like dishes and windows breaking and plaster cracking, and magnitudes five and six that you'll start to see damage to houses and buildings. Earthquakes above magnitude five occur every one to two years and above magnitude six about once a decade. And for the record, earthquakes aren't just on Earth. It turns out moonquakes occur too.